Let's imagine that the city is trying to produce a promotional video for investors. However, this video from 2019 is going to be used as quick B-roll. Simply looking at the first frame on the player, we can clearly see that this footage was zoomed in, so it's just a little soft around the edges. We can also see that there is some compression along the perimeter around here. In addition to a lot of alias edges, which is those kind of stepping look you see on these cables and these edges. Additionally, our client wants us to scale up this resolution to 4K UHD instead of this original 1920 by 1080 full HD video. Luckily, by playing the footage through, it's pretty consistent with what we need to do. Okay, so let's get started on this. So now that we know what our task is, let's go ahead to enhancements and on output resolution changes to twice the size. So two times upscale. And now let's go ahead and decide what AI models we want to use to enhance this footage. So remember, we want to be able to take care of some of this compression. Let me go ahead and zoom in. Let's take care of some of this compression going on. You can see this around these edges. And also, again, we want to take care of the stepping look from the alias result, especially most notable on these wires. Okay. Other than that, it'll be nice just to get a little bit more details and things like that. But uh, for B-roll, I think the main thing is to take care of those first few things we mentioned. Okay, great. So let's start with Proteus. It's one of the most robust AI models we have and uh, it's great in most situations so let's go ahead and just try it auto so if we look at the upper left hand corner it's at auto because i have not enabled any parameters i'm going to render the first five seconds this is not a very long clip it's about 10 seconds so about half of it uh, so let's do that okay so this is not looking bad at all just even going on the auto settings are before you could see the alias edges and the compression and look at that nice and clean okay okay great so maybe five seconds is too much for our test i'll just do the two seconds and why not let's use the mark in and mark out perfect so we'll just focus on this so i'm pretty happy with the auto settings i'm gonna switch change this name to pro auto let's duplicate this and i'm gonna try some manual settings okay so let's enable parameters i'm gonna stick with dynamic and i i think the compression was really good already we'll improve detail a little bit more i'm not sure how much more it's gonna grab maybe something in the hills let me go ahead and sharpen and reduce the noise just uh just a little bit same thing with compression doesn't hurt d halo there might be a little bit from the original source. You can see that's just the highlight of the wire. I will bring this down just a little bit. Anti-alias de-blur, I'm gonna leave it where it's at. It looks like it was working perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and render this at two seconds, but I guess I'll do in and out now, since I have a mark in, mark out. That works for me. All right, also looking pretty darn good. I wanna move this one over just so we could uh, do a comparison focus on the person here and yeah look at that we got a little bit more details out of our manual settings here we got the solid line here is getting a little lost this detail I'm not even sure what this is and it looks like there's some sort of detail there so this, overall it's giving me a little bit more values and something that's a little bit more realistic I'm I'm liking this one a little bit more even in the hills we got a little more details that is fantastic Yeah, there's pretty good results. Very nice. Okay, cool. So I think I'm actually happy with that on the Proteus side, but it doesn't hurt to see what some of the other models has for us. So let me, um, let's give Rhea a try, see how that does. Since I'm liking the Proteus manual, maybe I'll have it compare that one. So I'll do it on this side. We will switch this to two times upscale. I guess I could have duplicated that and kept it the same. That's okay. Let's go to Rhea. Now this is going to take a little bit longer. So Rhea is one of our heaviest models. 
So any test you do, just expect to uh, wait a little bit for this one. Let me go ahead and render in and out and see how that goes. This is at Ria Auto. Okay, it looks like you finished. Let's see how it looks. Not bad at all. Certain features are a little bit better on with Rhea, but certain features are still pretty good on Proteus. I do have a little more details here, a little less here, but there's certain features where you can see the shape of the, the guy's hat and hair. Looks a little bit better here than it does here. There's a, a couple things better from one over the other. You do have a little bit more details here that looks nice. Let's see. Details on the hills. Kind of like the break up here, but I do like the fall off here. Looks like there's a little more details. From a distance, this would look a lot better. I think this part of the building gets lost. It looks cleaner here. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either one. They're both really good candidates. Uh, especially if you're going to be watching it as a whole and not zoomed in as far as we were. Either of them are more than fine. Alright, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that too. So, Rhea Auto. Alright, let's try one more. So, let me duplicate that. Duplicate the tab so I can keep the resolution. But I'm going to go ahead and try Nix. And I might as well so I don't confuse myself. Name this. Nix, uh, auto. All right, great. So Nix, we're not gonna enable parameters. We're just gonna see what it gives us. And let's rock and roll. Okay, let's see. All right. Not looking too bad. Compared to our Proteus manual, this one is still the winner. Between Rhea and Proteus manual they're they're both looking really good okay I wonder if there's any manual settings that we could apply to this so I'm just gonna work off of this one since I know I'm not gonna use the auto switch this to manual again I'm gonna stick to dynamic it's just nice and easy reduce noise I thought I did all right with that already I think we need to sharpen a little bit Maybe fix compression a little bit. Reduce grain. There really wasn't any to reduce, so maybe I'll go negative on this one. Reduce noise. I guess that's fine. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, let's see. How do things turn out? Well, it's definitely a little bit better than auto, but it's still a little softer so i think in this case nix is usually really good for uh most situations it handles smaller videos uh really well in this case i think Proteus is definitely uh the winner here um let's compare against Rhea one more time so all right we've got the new champions here and there is a lot of details i do like about the Rhea model over the Proteus there's certain small details that just look realistic however based on how long it took and the resources I think I might actually end up with the Proteus one Rhea did take a little while uh, in comparison to Proteus and I think I could add a little more enhancement features with this than if I was to add multiple here and then just let the time balloon so I'll go back to single mode let's switch this to Proteus manual so let's take a look at this. Pretty good, but it's a little shaky. There's a little stuff going on. So let's see if we can stabilize this. For this next section, let me close this carrot here. I am fine with the frame rate and everything here. So let's look at stabilization. I want to be able to stabilize this shot. If you have an older computer or you you meet just the minimum requirements for video AI. I think this will be a good point to export your video with the first enhancement and then go ahead and bring it in to start adding stabilization and anything else. So smaller render passes might be the best way if you have an older machine. Um, otherwise, 
if you have a newer machine that runs pretty fast and you have a lot of resources, then you could just go ahead and start adding a few more of these filters to it. Generally, I have good luck between 25 and 50 strength. Almost never have to push it any further than that. I think I've only had one or two cases, but most of the time I kind of stay within this range. Rolling shutter, jittery motion as we went over that. I don't think this shot requires any of this. I think we'll be fine, especially for the distance, to just stick with strength. All right, let's see how that looks. I think in this case, I'm gonna do the entire frame range just to really get a really good idea. Clear this out. And I'm gonna go ahead and render the entire thing with the enhancement and stabilization. All right, it looks like we finished. Let's see what this result looks like. Oh, that's so much better. Before, after, before, after. You know, I'm content with that. It's, it's already so much better. Um, I could always push the strength a little bit more if I need to, but it uh, handled for me the biggest problem was over here. Look at that. Perfect. Okay, great. I did skip SDR to HDR. Not every monitor will be able to see the results, but I think I'm going to see about getting a few more details out of these um, beams here. They're quite bright, and at face value, they're losing some detail. So I want to see if I can bring some of those things back. Just exposure a little bit. Yeah, I'll leave that one alone. Okay, turn off stabilization, because otherwise that might take a while. And I'll do one sec. Oh yeah, that's so much better already. So before, a little blown out. After. And it resolved some of the color, brought some lost details up and out. I, I'm not going to change anything. This is great. You can see these different values here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, great. I am pretty happy. There's no, there's not enough motion for me to have motion deblur. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to re-enable stabilization. Again, if your machine is unable to handle these, it might be good to just run these as passes. If you have the minimum requirements, to run the tool or you have very low resources I highly recommend maybe just running the enhancement first then bringing that in take the route of SDR to HDR export that and then bring it back in and put it to stabilization you're gonna get a, a very similar result I know this machine could handle this so I'm gonna go ahead and run all three so we already went over the cloud export as and quick export in this case, I'm going to do export as, save this as final, okay? And now we're going to go look at our queue. It lets me know everything that I have going on with this. So I have the enhancement, I have SDR to HDR, I have stabilization, and the codec I'm using. And then I could close this. All right, great. I wanted to make sure that it's the full range and it is, so I'm happy about that. So it's gonna take a, a few minutes. All right, it looks like we finished. So that's essentially it. If you have the right monitor to watch an SDR to HDR video, then it should play fine. Otherwise, like this example here, it's gonna look a little washed out. I mean, that's kind of expected. So just make sure you know what your intention is for the video. Since everybody does not have an HDR monitor and this is for the city, it might be a good idea just to remove the SDR to HDR. So I provided a version with the HDR upgrade and one without. So I'm gonna go ahead and export as final 
no HDR. And now we're rendering that out. All right, looks like we just finished. Let's see the result. There you go. There's our final with no HDR. That's fantastic. Okay, great. All right, and that concludes our under construction example.